Welcome to the second spotlight video of the RoboCup Humanoid League virtual competition. I do not have as many updates this week to share with you than I had last week, but there are still a couple of things I want to go over with you. Let's start with the environment around the virtual field. We did receive the question during last week whether it is really necessary that the environment on the floor around the virtual field has basically a similar color than the field itself, so green. And the answer is no. So we did change this. And as you can see here, the new environment around the field will be brown, which is easier for teams um, to do horizon detection and also a bit easier for the audience to distinguish where the field actually ends. We have also released the second call for participation. This is mostly a reminder for all of you that the submission deadline is April 12th. This is in three weeks already. And this is a submission deadline both for the Virtual Humanoid League Soccer Competition and the research demonstration as well. You can find the updated call for participation on our Humanoid League website. There are not that many changes in comparison to the first call for participation, just some minor updates that are basically covering the recent developments and more specific details that we have released in the past weeks. I also want to talk to you about the third update of the Virtual Humanoid Soccer Competition rulebook. So there are still some open issues with the rulebook that we're working on. The first one is the reintroduction of the drop ball and deciding how the order referee can detect whether a game is stuck so a drop ball should be called. The second issue is the penalty for ball holding, making sure that we, sorry for ball handling, so touching the ball with the hands or the arms of the robot. And we wanna make sure that we find a rule here that doesn't over penalize robots that are accidentally falling on the ball or getting the ball kicked against their arm while they are laying on the floor. But on the other hand, also not giving teams an advantage who actually use deliberate ball handling in the game. The last and probably most difficult part to implement is the forceful contact. So how do we penalize pushing between robots? And still here we are working on a similar issue to not over penalize robots that are using minor force but still bring another robot to fall and so having a lot of robots penalized or a lot of free kicks being called all the time, but also making sure that larger robots cannot just simply run over smaller robots in the tournament. The original rule update was supposed to come out today. We have now postponed this to April 2nd, just to make sure that we have enough time to thoroughly work on the updates. Then the last issue that we have is that we are still looking for a student assistant to help the technical committee with the implementation of test cases for the WeBot scenario and also updates on the game controller and the competition infrastructure. So we are looking for someone who has strong programming skills in Python and C++, experience implementing virtual environments and writing robot control software for WeBots, experience with robotic systems in general, and who is fluent in written and spoken English. I'll link the complete description for this hire of student assistant in the info box down below. And we've all sent this around before on the RoboCup Humanoid League mailing list. If you're interested yourself or you know someone who might be interested, please get in contact with the technical committee as soon as possible. Uh, it's important to note that the successful candidate needs to be able to work as a freelancer for the technical committee. So please make sure that you're actually able to work as a freelancer before you contact us. I want to now go over with you what is going to be happening next week. So let's start with what's happening today, which is very exciting. The new release of the Cyberbotics virtual environment. We are today expecting an update on the artificial turf, which is going to give us a more realistic behavior of the walking on the artificial turf. We'll also see an update of the ball texture and the ball behavior. So for example, how far the ball is rolling on the field and how it's bouncing off it. 
and also an update of the environment around the field, which is what I've talked about before. We received this question last week on how much the virtual environment is visually going to change from now on. And the answer is it is not supposed to. So from the release today, we are planning to keep the visuals in the virtual environment fixed and only really make updates to this if it's absolutely necessary. So if you want to use machine learning, for example, for your vision with the update today, you will be able to train your systems already. And then as a last piece, we are also expecting to release the robot control API. So the piece of, um, so their TCP IP protocol that connects your robot control software with a robot model on the field and gives motor commands and receives sensor input from the robot model. And we expect this to be either released as part of the release today or in one of the coming days. From today onwards, we'll also work with Cyberbotics on the implementation of the auto referee software. And in parallel, we're working on benchmarking and trying to narrowing down the specifications of the hosting infrastructure of the virtual competition. And we expect to have some more details on this by mid of April so that teams can start setting up their own similar virtual environments, so, uh, their own virtual environment to uh, train under conditions that are as realistic and as close to a real competition environment as possible. This is all what's going on today and what happened last week. So as I said before, if you want to receive this weekly updates of the spotlights and make sure you don't miss any uploads, please make sure to subscribe and also enable notifications. And otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow in the office hours if you want to chat with us or have some questions and you'll receive a written update and newsletter on Thursday. Thank you so much. See you next week.